This is where it gets really important. The buffet costs $73. Yes. How does someone come here and really get their money's worth? Well, you'd be surprised. We have What? Yes. The things. Pay one set price and eat until you can't eat anymore. Oh, Lord. But do the same rules apply when dining at a luxury buffet? Just right here in this small little area, they have a ton of unique seafood. Wow. This is everything you can think of. <laughs> in this exclusive series, we're demystifying high-end cuisine and high-priced ingredients. What's the most expensive buffet you've ever eaten at? I don't pay for buffet. <laughs> cool. Today, we're going to see a premium buffet from a chef's perspective, learning how they satisfy demanding guests who are paying top dollar. We've got five main stations. Every station has a signature. We're getting one last taste of the highlight. It's amazing. I see a full tuna looking at me. And most important, have you had abalone? Never. Learning the right strategies to beat the buffet. There's so much food here. Yeah. We're not trying everything. Mm. I think we should get some snails. That's what you're going to get at a buffet? Yeah, no. I don't know what to do. It all starts right here. We've come to JW Cafe, known for its sumptuous buffet-style offerings. You can see this battle in a man, a fight to the finish, we can walk to the end if you like, cause you and them see that time's not a thing here when you've been blessed and born to the life. See me, I got So right when you walk in, they have the dessert section. They've got fresh fruit, they've got little cakes and bars, they have a freaking chocolate God. fountain. Do you see that? Everything looks so beautiful that I cannot eat it. Well, everybody's about to tear it apart, so <laughs> we might as well be part of the destruction. This looks amazing. This is crazy. Wow, look at that. Oh my God. Meet Chef Rene Oscom. Rene has a strong culinary foundation and 26 years experience in international hotel kitchens. Now, he's the executive chef managing all F&B offerings in this hotel's restaurant. Chef, put it there. How you doing? Welcome to Hanoi. Thank you very much. What kind of skills and experience do you need to properly run a buffet at this scale? Um, people, people skill. Because we work with so many chefs, we have about 180 in the whole hotel. How can one person manage all that? I mean, what does your day look like? Quality check, I would say 20-30% of the time. And the rest of the time is planning and execution. Have you ever tried to go to a buffet that you didn't work for and say, I'm just going to do a quality check for you guys for free? <laughs> no. Okay, I was just thinking of a way to get a free meal. High-end experience comes with a price tag, unless you bring your own film crew. Here, you'll pay about $73. In the USA, it likely cost much, much more. How many different food items are available when you pay that $73? 400. 400. Wow. For that price, you're promised a theatrical gastronomic tour. How are you able to manage getting that much food prepared? Every section has a chef that's responsible for it. So basically, we work as a team together with all our chefs. We plan the menus together. Like a symphony that's been orchestrated a thousand times before, Chef Rene is the conductor, and every station works as a perfectly tuned instrument. What time do you need to begin preparation to have all these items ready in time? These items went on uh, this morning at 7.30. Food that needs time to be prepared starts first. Everything that's roasted or grilled is prepped and kept over fire, with portions sliced and peeled off during service. Lamb legs, bone-in ribeye steak, 26 pounds of meat, grilled to perfection. Next, suckling pig, roasted Chinese style. Duck, dried for two days. It gets seasoned and roasted, Beijing style. While the meat is being prepared, other stations are just getting started. Pasta, freshly made from flour, eggs, and salt. Kneaded, flattened, and cut into fettuccine strips. Dessert, crafting the perfect sweet blend of flavors. Releasing one final gush of sugar-induced dopamine before you finally collapse from overfeeding. The seafood, coming just in time. Loaded with a variety of sea creatures from around the globe. Shrimp, gooey duck, mantis shrimp, crab, 
Canadian lobster and this 100 pound yellow fin tuna. I'm not sure what heaven's like, but if it can compare to this, I'd consider being good. It's all original. Enough staring at the food. It's Chef Rene is serving a taste fresh off the grill. Roasted lamb left. It's a beautiful bastard Australian lamb. Did it fly here? It's probably on the boat. Then I'm not jealous. <laughs> Sorry, I, these days with Corona, I get jealous of food that can fly because I, I, I can't even, fly. I can we give this a try? Yes, dig in. Dig I'm going to cut this a little bit. <laughs> Are you going to no, bite off not. of that? Cheers. <laughs> It's all Smoky and just super simple. You just bring it out the natural flavors. A little salt, a little, little pepper, and just a natural spice that the lamb has comes out beautifully. Usually lamb has such a sort of like strong taste, mm. but when you eat it, you, you don't taste it at all. Right, you can be gamey. Lamb, when it becomes old, the flavor becomes more strong, so you need to make sure that it's not too old. Wow, that's fantastic. Wow. What are the biggest challenges in running a buffet this large? The biggest challenge is to make sure that the people who come towards the end of service still have the same experience as if you just walk in at the beginning. Mm. I don't like food that sits in hot dishes. I mean, after 10, 15 minutes, all the vibrance is out of the food, the flavor is out of the food, and everything starts to taste the same. Here, they have a different strategy. Less waste, better flavors. All it requires is some thoughtful planning. I don't need recognition. About 10% of the dishes are cooked to welcome the soon arriving guests at 12 p.m. It's all about refreshing, batch cooking, making sure the food is not out too long. The desserts are artfully plated. I'm on a mission. Yeah. Side dishes, salad, pizza, ready to go. Cold cuts and cheese, oh yeah, baby. Abalone kanji, expensive, heartwarming. Seafood, it's gonna be the item everyone is after. Seafood is king in Vietnam. People come basically because of our seafood selection. I don't need oysters, shucked, sashimi, sliced. Half the live seafood remains in the tank for guests who want to cook to order, and half is steamed, boiled, or grilled for a taste of instant satisfaction. Right now, preparation is underway for the brunch coming up at 12 o'clock right here, the seafood section. She's getting everything set up and put out. They have slipper lobster, spotted crabs. They have baby lobsters, everything. Just right here, you can get full of this super unique, very expensive seafood. Before we get started, I have to ask the chef, what is the right way to kind of cheat the buffet and really get your money's worth here? That's what I'm looking at. We're spending $73. How do I eat maybe $200 worth of food? Can it be done? Chef, it is 20 minutes until meal service begins. Is everything ready? I'm very happy with it. With the tuna here, are you gonna cut this up live in front of people and yes. make sashimi from this? Yes, absolutely. Let's do that right now. Absolutely. And cut to voiceover. And then we will appear back and we have oh, this. Oh, look at this. Wow. <laughs> the art of filmmaking. Here we have some sashimi tuna. Yes. Do you know what part this is from? The back. The back is a little less fat. Okay, right on. I'm gonna just grab a little piece. You got it. Oh, here you have chopsticks. I'm gonna give it a little dip. There we go. Cheers. Oh, it's so yummy. It's a local tuna from the Nachang area. I love that it's local. I never would have guessed that it's from Nachang. The texture is so different from the tuna I have. In, the, in a good way. Like, usually it's far apart, you know? Yeah, super fresh, super yummy. This is where it gets really important. Okay. And this is where um, we should talk quiet because there's some corporate people around us. The buffet costs $73. Yeah. What is a good buffet strategy? Because I know I shouldn't go eat some fried rice and bread and call it a day. For me, I, I don't go to a restaurant for value eating. I go for experience. Okay. Are you satisfied? Well, let's get back to the question. <laughs> you want to answer. <laughs> How about what are the most expensive most items expensive that you serve items. here? Okay. Because you have foie gras. It's a foie gras unlimited. Yes. I can eat as much as well, as okay. much as you want. Who could eat more but than once? Well, you'd be surprised. We've had guests at a table of six, ate about 150 slices. What? Yes. Uh Really? Without blinking. And you didn't have to call the police or, uh, sorry, you didn't have to call an ambulance. No, 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 no. they walked out like nothing happened. No, some people love it. That's one way to get your money, yeah. sorry. So foie gras, lobster, truffles, all the meats, the seafood. In the Chinese selection, there's an item with an abalone conch and some other high value items. So indirectly, you've given me the answer. Yes. If you want to beat the buffet, mm. you just got to eat a bunch of meat and then get gout. Yeah. Yeah. Can you make it right when you always online?
How can you make it right when you be talking all the time? You always talk right here is our first stop. This is the Chinese area. Oh, nice. Tons of food, but this caught my eye. Abalone. Super expensive. Have you had abalone? No. Really? Yes, so this is exciting. And it looks kind of funny. <laughs> it's, it, what's it look like? <laughs> There's so much food here. Yeah. We're not trying everything. It's important to first eat with your eyes. It's like yeah. foreplay. I'm looking at you. You look great. <laughs> I'm not going to eat you. We got to move on. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, we're not doing it. Next section. Here, this looks pretty familiar. Almost like Vietnamese street food. What you'd find at an out or like shellfish restaurant. Okay, what do you think? Oh, lobster. Lobster. Right. Hello. Okay, let's get lobster. Yay. And some snails. So they also have Canadian lobster back here in a tank. I think we can just order one and split it. Okay. Also, I think they have something here I'm guessing you haven't tried. It's called a gooey duck. I think I've heard about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe like on National Geographic? Snail, grilled, gooey duck, grilled then topped with scallion oil and ground peanut. Spiny lobster, topped with bechamel sauce and mozzarella, then melted in the oven. Then the Canadian lobster, simply steamed. This is quite a fancy seafood feast here. What I like about it is we've taken a lot of things you wouldn't normally get to try, especially all together. I think we should start here. This is a spiny lobster. Yeah. How many of these lobsters could you eat? Like 20? 10? Two. Oh, you are the worst person to bring to a buffet. I know, I There's was no about to There's no reason to bring you to a buffet. <laughs> all right, cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. It's cheesy, it's chewy, it's satisfying. Mm. I think it tastes very fresh. It tastes sweet too. Here, Canadian lobster. Look like you when you go in the sun. Yeah, that's right. Oh, this whole day is worth it. I've been working so hard, walking around, staring at food all day. The only thing that makes me a little sad is in the US, I would have just a big bowl of melted butter to put this into. Here, um, fish sauce. No, 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 no. Okay, well, <laughs> salt, pepper, lime. Cheers. Yeah. like a boss. <laughs> so good. This is so much better. It's yeah. better than the other one, right? Yes. The meat's real nice. It's still got like some chew to it, but not like so stringy. And overall very satisfying. Mm. I always wonder like, when you're like Oprah rich, is this like a snack? You eat 10 lobsters? No sh yeah. We got some big beautiful snails here. I like it. Doesn't really have a strong taste. Very chewy texture. Here, I'm excited for you to try this. Me too. This is a gooey duck. My first time having gooey duck. I've never had one this tiny before. Oh, it's bigger. No, they get literally this long. Yeah. You ready for another round? <laughs> Chef, we're back for more. Excellent. I was thinking, usually when I go to a buffet, I might mix and match and kind of make my own recipe. You have pasta. Yes. You have foie gras. Yes. You have truffle. Exactly. Can we mix all those? We, I can mix anything you like. He's allowing me to ruin the name of French cuisine. Chef Rene pan sears the foie gras. He blanches the pasta, then combines it with a green mushroom sauce. Plate, pile it high with slices of burgundy truffle and eat. This is a Frankenstein creation. This is crazy. It's not a dish, and no one would ever do this, except for me, and it came from my brain. I think we should just cut the foie gras in half at first. Ready? Okay, cheers. cheers. Oh my god. It's like I'm eating like a piece of butter. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say like a piece of art. No. But yeah, like butter. <laughs> Very rich, buttery, creamy. It just gently cascades down your throat like a fat kid going down a water slide. Here, I'm gonna mix some pasta with some truffle with foie gras. Cheers. Mm. I kind of like it. Somehow it worked. Thank you. Well, I'm a bit of a chef myself. <laughs> I mean, I didn't cook it, but I gotta say, the noodles do a good job of cutting some of the heaviness of that foie gras, but it is still plenty heavy, but I still like it. Well, I can tell. I think we should get dessert. Oh, still? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Here, they make a dessert in front of you. They make a teppanyaki ice cream rolls. You know teppanyaki? <laughs> so the base is vanilla. Over here, they have 16 topping options. You pick two, I'll pick two, and we'll put all of it in there. We want blueberry, roasted almonds, meringue, and gummy bears. So 
Most of the happiness I've felt in life has come by way of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Food just makes me feel good. Moya? Ye? <laughs> That's delicious. This buffet, I could come here every weekend for a year and still find new flavor combinations that set off my taste buds and make me smile. Like achieving nirvana, but with none of the discipline. It's not cheap, but my God, is it worth it. I guess I loved you once. Four, three, two, yeah. Welcome to the best ever merch store, where you can check out our brand new designs. Best ever bandanas in black, white, and red. The Please Send Nudes hoodie. Pillow soft fabric with a quality custom graphic inlay. And our street food around the world graphic tee. We're now shipping everywhere around the world. Just visit shopbesteverfood.com or click the link in the description below to get your new merch today. A piece. Boom. Guys, that concludes our fine dining series. A huge thank you to Twin. Did I say it right? Yes. Twin is on the Instagram.com. Follow her there. Gentlemen, only uh, polite DM messages. <laughs> you know, I got to tell you guys, the men are animals. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. A piece. Yay. All right, let's uh, leave, and maybe they won't notice we didn't pay.